<laughs> Hello everybody. Today we're talking about writing for strings and I'm going to show you one approach to keeping organised when you're improvising into a door because uh, it's a very different thing just sort of making it up as you go along when you're playing straight into Cubase or Logic, Logic in this particular case, um, than it is working it out on paper. And trying to get it to sound coherent as though you know what you're doing takes a bit of doing. I have a particular approach to this and I'm going to share that with you. At the same time, I'm going to be using uh, this library. It's called Soaring Strings and it comes from a company called Musical Sampling. And a lot of in the know composers have been saying nice things about musical sampling for a while, so I thought I'd check it out. Soaring strings is exactly what you'd expect. You know, does what it says on the tin. It soars. It's mostly legato line. It just has legatos and sustains, and that's it. So we've got loaded up here um, the full normal um, lineup: violin one, violin two, viola, um, cello, CLN. I don't want cello and bass. So. Oh, don't get sued again! Well, actually, worse than that, the mafia will come round. No, okay, so look, here's my approach. Um, if we... we've got an ensemble patch down here called Full Strings. What I tend to do is I get the basic chord progression worked out using an ensemble string patch. Actually, more than the basic chord progression patch. I mean, let's just have a go, see what comes out. Okay, I quite like that. There's one or two places in that I wasn't so keen. That. Yeah. That's what I wanted. So I need to change that F to a G. Uh, where is it? Simple little edit there, and I think it'll now make it sound better. Right, let's see how that goes. Now, if you're able to improvise like that, that makes life a lot simpler for you. Um, if you, you know, what I'm, what I'm, what I've sort of learned to do over the years is to be able to improvise in pieces of string writing like that. So you've got the fifth and you've got the third there. Then I'm just walking that C down to um, uh, the B flat there. So that forms um, first inversion of G minor. So you've got B flat, G and D. Then I go to a first inversion of F major, and then I slide this A down to give it the F minor. Then back to the C again. B e flat. F, and then back to G major. Now, um, when we come to, over on this side you'll see, we've got all these, um, ah, where are they gone? So we've got all our, our tracks there. This is where it can go so horribly wrong. You start tr playing in one line after another and you have no idea what's going on. So what I'm going to do, and I suspect Hugh's going to speed this up, aren't you Hugh? Is we're going to put markers in, um, one for each um, chord. And so up there, we will not be in any doubt what, uh, where we are harmonically during any of this. So now, let's do it. Ta-da! So I've done it. Um, I've just put chord names in. Um, but if you want to use uh, Roman numerals or any other um, notation you want, that obviously whatever makes the most sense to you when you're playing things in. Now, that's really helpful because we've now got um, a sort of a reference as we play through as to where we are harmonically in any one part of the piece. Now, the other thing I would do is listen to the top line and say, are we happy with this?
Yes. So I'm going to play that. And we're going to play that in on the first violins. Epic fail, epic fail. Uh, let's have a chest rehearsal. Oh, I start on the E flat, don't I? Silly old me. One, two, three, four. Okay, uh, that was a good practice. Do it again. Okay, there's uh, a lot of oh, a lot of mob wheel action going on in here. Let's see if we can get it all up at once. Is this going to be? It? Oh no, there we go. So now you can see everything at once. Here we go. Okay, now that's sounding a bit better. I can now go through and take the top line off because I don't need it anymore. So bit by bit, we're going to replace the, um, uh, these uh, strings at the bottom. So that's a line. I do the bottom line. So I'm going to put the celli on. There's going to come a point where we're going to do, um, do the um, uh, those strings in octaves, but that's not we're not there yet. So how does the cello line go? Let me just have a little look. Um, or listen, indeed. I could sort of copy it off, but you can't really, because it's just played differently. So you're better off doing it again. very simple um, but then we can always elaborate on that as we go forward so we start right let's play this cello line in at uh, term here we go right so Two, three, four. Down to the A, because I'm going to F major. Now down to the A flat. Okay, now um, I'm going to put in the inner parts. Now, what I might do is ignore what I've done there. Um, go to the viola part. Okay, so where are we started? Oh, that's not a viola. Big legato violins. You've got to be having a joke, mate. You've got to be laughing at me. That's better. This, this is where it starts to get tricky. Two, three, four. So we're starting on the bottom there, so I need to... Okay. 
This is because the inner parts are what makes string writing interesting. Turn the replacey thing on. I prefer the replacey thing to the mergey thing, frankly. Not always, but I do it right now. Right, so we're going to go one, two, with C minor, so I need the G. Stay on that G. doing is I'm sort of improvising an inner part which is hard but if you keep going bits of it will suddenly work and those are the bits you keep so two three four G no. I'm trying a little sort of suspension there that didn't work try again three four stay on the G Again. like some of that so we're going to do it again <laughs> one two three four that's better right uh, now that's where I'm going wrong I like that little uh, suspension in there that went well and now I've just got to work out what I've actually got going on here so let's have a look um, uh, come on, select them both. Let's have a little look. Where do we start? So that starts on the E flat and then it goes uh, C, G, C. Okay. So if it starts on the E flat, uh, so there's room for a G. Maybe I can just do something as simple as that. Um, now I can do one of two things here. I can either drop in or I can... To start with, I'm going to produce a second line of this so that I don't have to um, mess with it and then I can combine them later. So, so we're going to try this. Ready? Nah, that didn't work at all. So good. Sounds weird, but it might work. Well, it worked for me. Now, here's why I put it on separate lines. Look, you see these, the all these. Um, uh, what's the zoom even? Well, there we go. Do you see how all the uh, controller lines here are completely out of whack with the controller lines there? So when we combine the two together. Um, which we're just about to do. Uh, where's my glue tool? Glue tool, glue tool. 
Uh, oh, stupid me. Such a key, uh, such a logic noob. Right. Um, let's just have a look. You can see in the background there. That's you, what you don't want um, is the. Uh, uh, controllers doing this, leaping around all over the shop. So you've got to smooth all that out. That's the most important thing. And that's why sometimes just dropping in doesn't work. There we go. See if that works. Let's see that how that sounds. forward a bit. Right now, the, set, the second violins are going in. What we're going to do is put them there and whack them up an octave. Where do I want them to come in? Uh, I don't want them in from the start. Sounds nice, but it's getting... starting to sound all right and the same point I bring the second violins in I'm going to bring the basses in ah but I can't just copy the basses straight over um sorry so let me just run that through again because I don't think you were watching the right bit were you or let me just line it up so you do rock to the right bit okay here we go right I need that note in. I need that note which comes in just before. Do, do. Because that's, uh, I don't want them. And also I need to get my little pencil thing out. There we go. And just edge that off. So it pe so it comes in. You want to avoid little choppy things like that because that makes it sound really weird. It needs to be smoothed off is better. Okay, let's go again. Now we can add the bases in. Now, um, a lot of the time bases follow the uh, um, the cello line or the clum line, as I've misspelt it today. Um, but in this case, because we've got, we've got, look, we've got it doing a fifth and an octave in the cello, we're going to... See which of those two sounds better. Very deep one doesn't sound as good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. In, I'm going to go rather than starting down there, which would mean um, a, on a on a real acoustic on a real bass. That's the extension because actually uh, the bass only goes down to the E. So if you want to double it down the octave, you're going to have to use a five-string bass or the one with the extension. And actually, I'm going to go like this, and then only go to the bottom octave on the final note. Okay. Get ready.
okay. Now this is starting to sound all right. Um, let's see where we are. I mean, to be honest, you could play with this for days. Let's just have a little. Davisi with the islands and put another little line in there. I might do. Um, which is the bit where I felt there was room for something else. Um, and that's uh, on a uh, C minor. So. Whoops, what have I done? Oh, muted. What happens if I change that line? Did I do this for? I'm getting lost. Hmm. There's something not quite right going on here. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm just going to mute uh, that that little bit um, and then play a different line on another track um, so that I can just see what's going on so so it's starting in on the F minor is it? No, or the C minor Something else is on that C. Ah, the E flat is in the in the lead. So that's why doubling up doesn't sound very good. I like this. Maybe, maybe. Something along these lines is going to work. I'm just trying to work. Suspensions are great, but they sometimes get you into trouble if you if you lose track of where. That was all right.
I, I think we've probably done enough to show you the, the gist of what this is about. got going on here is exactly what I said I should avoid. Um, the clashing of the, um, there we go. It's, uh, yes, clashing uh, controller lines. So let's glue them together. Oh, sorry, select both and glue them together. Now go in and have a good look at my, con what, where is it? Nearly something not quite right about the very beginning. something not quite right about that but it works after that it, so maybe I just have to Displeased with that. It's simpler um, and it seems to fit. This is the kind of thing which, if you got it played by real players, would sound bloody wonderful. Oh, oh, hang on, what have I done here? I want to. You can see I don't really know yet, logic. <laughs> but we give it a go. Uh, split, short, and keep. Uh, keep, I don't know, I'll keep. Now I'm going to glue it together. Yep, I am going to glue it together. Now let's see what this sounds like. Does this sound like him? Missing a note. Now we do need to go through and make sure all these notes overlap because if they don't overlap, you're not going to get the legato effect. That's how you trigger legato. So it's really easy not to let them do their thing. Now that will sound better. Shall we just solo that track out so that we can hear it properly? Oh, this one. Okay. Okay, I think I've given you the idea now. So let's listen to this epic piece. There you go. So um, that's one approach to playing, if you're playing in how you do it. Um, an awful lot of you will be screaming at him, just get out Dorico and do it on paper because it'd be so much simpler. Uh, and that is true um, to a large extent. But when you're in the middle of a thing and you, <sighs> to be honest, when normally, when I'm, if I've got a piece like this, which I want to work through, I do do it on paper because it's easier. But if you're just doing it into the door, 
for me, this is the way which works best. So look, I um, hope you found that useful. Um, if you did, you could always think of subscribing and uh, or taking one of our short courses like this one. See you again very soon. How to Write Music is my online course that takes you through every step of the process. How to get going, chord progressions, tune writing, developing and arranging your music, six hours of exclusive video tutorials, a course text packed with tips and a supportive online community. Get more out of your music and sign up today.